Overcome. So how do you overcome? So how do you overcome? So how do you overcome Satan? How do you resist the devil? How do you resist temptation? In Revelation chapter 12, it's a story of some courageous believers that overcame Satan. And here's what the Bible says. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives until the death. Number one, they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb. What does that mean? That means that they recognized that their access to God was given to them, not based on what they did for God, but based on what God did for Him. The Bible says, we who were far off have been made near by the blood of Jesus. The Bible also says, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, the devil will tempt us, will give in to the temptation, and then the devil will say, don't even think about going to God. That would be hypocritical. No, I have access to God's presence through the blood of the Lamb, meaning Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. He shed his blood for me. And that shed blood gives me the ability to approach God. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Number two, by the word of their testimony. They spoke boldly about their faith. Listen, we all have a testimony. Our testimony is simply the story of what God has done for us, how we came to faith. You know, people can argue with what you say. They can argue with your theology, but they can't argue with your personal story. You're the greatest expert on you. And this is a great way to start a conversation. Tell someone what Jesus Christ has done for you. And lastly, they love not their lives until the death, which means these folks described in Revelation 12 knew that their life was in the hands of God. The Bible actually says our times are in his hands. Listen, stop worrying about how long you're going to live and focus instead on living well, living in a way that brings honor and glory to God. So one day we will hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. He may give you 10 more days, 10 more years or decades more but don't worry about that. That's in God's hands. So remember, you overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb, the word of your testimony, and they did not love their lives until the death. Something to think about. This isn't a game, guys. 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 This is sus. Super sus. Oh, come on, man. What? This is so demonic. This is crazy. Look how many people are filming this right now. Too many people, even Christians, will say, it's just entertainment. But Satan, he knows it's not just entertainment. It's time that you and I take serious inventory on the content we're consuming because it's either drawing us closer to God or it's drawing us closer to the devil, full stop. You wanna learn more about spiritual warfare? This is LAS 89.3. You can always go back to this line.
Jack FM. Other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved. Are you <laughs> one of the 2% and how do you do it effectively or should you even do it at all? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know where I don't know. From. You're good at it. I stink. Well, I think you're better than you think. No. I think we worry too much. We think about it. We don't trust our instincts enough. And is it okay, though, I wonder, to spread yourself so thin? Because if I'm not focused 100% on the task in front of me, it's going to fail really bad. Oh, believe me, when I fail really bad, everybody knows it. Oh, boy. Yeah. So how are you handling this? Or have you got it licked? Share with us. How do you make multitasking work? 800-900-1300. Start your morning off right. Just say, Alexa, play K-Love. Now playing K-Love. When the solid ground is falling out from underneath my feet Between the black skies and my red eyes, I can barely see And when I'm feeling like I've been let down by my friends and my family I can hear the rain reminding me In the eye of the storm, you remain in control surrounds me in the eye of the storm mm -hmm. when my hopes and dreams are far from me and i'm running out of faith i see the future i picture slowly fade away and when the tears of pain and heartache are pouring down my face Find my peace in Jesus' name In the eye of the storm You remain in control Yes, you do, Lord. In the middle of the war You guard my soul You alone are the anchor When my sails are torn Your love surrounds me And I just don't know how I'm gonna make ends meet I did my best, now I'm scared to death That we might lose everything And when a sickness takes my child away And there's nothing I can do My only hope is to trust you I trust you, Lord In the eye of the storm You remain in control In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me 
in the eye of the storm. We care about you, and you're always welcome here. Positive, encouraging K Love. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. With foes on my left and fears on my right, they think that I'm all by myself in this fight. But they do not know the infinite size of the God who is by my side. Hey, on the fire, but my Goliath. Man, I'm talking about a big God, big God. When trouble comes around the way, only remedy for big eyes is a big God. Ain't nobody gonna shake my faith. No, I'm not afraid. Throw my hands up and praise for the times that he pulled me through. I'm counting on a big God that they can't stop. He's a big God. My world in his hands The monsters I face Don't make me afraid When I know that I'm standing right next to him I know you're smiling because I am. That song is so great. It's Tyrion and Big God. We're skipping Amy. If you love food, you love fellowship, and you love this music, you need to watch Caleb On Demand show Around the Table with Randy Tyler. It's free to watch. CalebOnDemand.com or Caleb On Demand app. I know you hurt me. I can see it in your eyes. So pull back the curtain and take off your disguise. Whoever told you you ain't worth the fire The cross tells a story how to change your mind Cause there's only love in the heart of God No room for shame in his open arms There's beauty from ashes so calm 
writing you off, leaving you lost. He's not sitting there shaking his head, wishing he'd never went to that cross. He's not sitting there shaking his head, writing you off, leaving you lost. He's not sitting there shaking his head. He went to that cross. He went to that cross. Zach Williams and Heart of God, positive, encouraging Caleb, Skip and Amy. Are you a multitasker? Experts say really only 2% of us are good at multitasking. And this morning, we're asking this 2%, how do you do it? Oh, how do I do it? I don't really have a choice. Like I said, I'm a nurse. I'm actually an acute care nurse practitioner. So I've got a million different things on my mind. And it's important because people rely on me. Like I literally have their, their health in my hand. You're, you're measuring out a syringe. You're checking out vitals. You are having a conversation with the patient. You're asking questions of the person passing you by, another nurse. And it, it just it's instinctive and it just yeah. happens. It just flows. I don't really know how to say how I do it, but I do. <laughs> do you agree or do you believe... E- you, you really learn to trust your instincts. Yes, absolutely. So we talk about and for nursing, um, it's our nurse's gut. That's what we call it. And any nurse listening will know exactly what I'm talking about. Incredible. Can I just throw out a question? Sure. Do sure. you feel as a multitasker, though, all of the items that you're handling at once don't get your full potential? Um, sometimes at home, I worry about that. Yeah. Now at work, it's just different. Like I have to give everything a hundred. Yep. Um, sure. I don't have a choice. It's fun to jump right. inside other people's brains. Just it just is crazy <laughs> to me. We Ooh, all think so scary. differently. I don't know. Kind of weird in there, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> it is a little weird in here. Watch out. At Kalov, it's our goal every day to help keep you spiritually strong with music that lifts you up and brings you closer to Jesus. Your music that you play keeps me going strong through the day, and I appreciate it so much. This summer, will you help keep K-Love going strong? Yes. 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 Your gift of any amount right now at klove.com will help listener-funded K-Love stay on the air and bring people closer to Jesus with, with every, every song, song that plays. plays. Stronger, stronger. As a thank you when you give, or even if you can't, go to klove.com and you'll be entered to win a trip for two on the K-Love Cruise, setting sail this January. And as a bonus to keep your family strong this summer, there are amazing devotionals from Rachel Lampa and Phil Wickham at klove.com for you to download now. Thanks for keeping K-Love strong this summer at klove.com. Go strong, K-Love. K-Love. Hey, this is Benjamin William Hastings, and you're listening to my new song, That's the Thing About Praise. Sometimes the only way going is a hallelujah. This song really exists for that same reason that Christian radio exists. Sometimes the only way to make it through this crazy life is with a hallelujah. You know, sometimes things are hard. That's the thing about Like climbing up a mountain that you ask God to move, and that's not the way he's decided to do this. I find the best way to endure those moments and make sure your focus is in the right place is through worship. Inside the Music. Caleb thanks One World LLC for providing a chance to win four tickets to the Water Lantern Festival, June 9th through 11th at Whittier Narrows Recreation Area. To enter to win, text the word WATER to 21947. Details and rules at klove.com. Got a kid you want to brag about? Tell us about them so we can spread the word. Click on Skip and Amy's page at klove.com and share the story of something amazing your child has done. Then listen to the Klove Morning Show every Wednesday morning to see if your kid is the good kid of the week.
Now more than ever before, we need God's help discerning what's true and what's not. We live in an era where more is thrown at you every day than at any other time in history. And because of that, we constantly need to be seeking God and the wisdom only He can offer us. Proverbs 19.20 reminds us, get all the advice and instruction you can so you will be wise the rest of your life. I'm Scott, and that's your verse of the day on K-Love. I saw mercy, mercy seated where the judge should be was guilty. Guilty and getting out of jail free. I could She was wondering why Christians weren't more loving. Hmm. And one day her dad comes home from a church service and and he was a little discouraged at that particular moment in the story. And uh, he's getting ready to eat the food that's left on the table for him by his wife Kay. And then there's Jan standing there and they have a conversation. And I love what she says to her father. So picture this for a moment. Chuck is sitting at the table. Across from the table is his daughter, Jan. And she says this to her father. You're out past curfew. You okay? Oh, I'm all right, babe. I know I've been distracted. I haven't been around a lot. No, lately. Dad, so I have something that I want to say to you. See, um, I was almost done with this whole Christianity thing. I was like, where's the love, you know? What are we even doing here? Where is Jesus in all of this? He seemed like a radical dude. I'd like him, but this, I don't know. But then you did what nobody else would even dare to do. <laughs> Come to find out Jesus came in with them. And you know what? I'm proud of you. You opened yourself up to something you didn't understand. I'm changed because of it. Thousands of us. But you don't have to carry it all. Okay? Don't lose yourself and all of it. Also, don't do drugs. <laughs> I love that statement Jen makes to her dad. When the hippies came in, Jesus came with them. Hmm. Now, that is not to imply that Jesus wasn't in their church and wasn't working in their church but it's sort of showing how Jen was seeing things, that she was a disillusioned church kid, mm. but these young people coming to Christ impacted her, and then she wanted to be closer to the Lord and made a recommitment to Christ as a result. Beautiful story, beautiful scene, and we want you to see it instead of just listen to it. And that is now possible because... The Jesus Revolution film is available on DVD, and we want to send you a copy. Now, I know it's out there streaming already. Some of you may have already watched it uh, on some streaming platform like Apple or Amazon. But listen, the Jesus Revolution DVD is special for a couple of reasons. Number one, it has bonus content, including something that I think is very important. It's a special message I filmed as the sun was setting on the beach where I present the gospel, and I even have a prayer that a person can pray to accept Christ. There's other bonus content on this film as well, and you can show it to as many people as you want, and we will send you this special harvest edition of the Jesus Revolution film for your gift of any size. That helps us to continue to preach the gospel and teach the word of God. So order your copy right now, and you can see that scene with Chuck and his daughter, and your own personal copy of Jesus Revolution on DVD. Yeah, that's right. So get in touch with us today. Our phone number is 1-800-821-3300. We'll send the DVD your way, along with a free streaming code, to thank you for your donation right now. And thanks for keeping in mind that this resource costs us more than is generally the case. So your generosity is certainly appreciated right now.
Again, call us anytime at 1-800-821-3300 or write A New Beginning, Box 4000, Riverside, California, 92514 or go online to harvest.org. Well, next time, Pastor Greg walks us through a number of specific spiritual gifts described in Scripture. We'll discover what they're all about and learn ways to determine if any of those gifts have been given to us. Join us here on A New Beginning with pastor and Bible teacher, Greg Laurie. A New Beginning is sponsored by Harvest Christian Fellowship. I'm Donna Rush with SoCal's Morning Rush. You can hear Pastor Greg Laurie again today at 1230 and at 5 p.m. right here on KKLA. And if you are looking for services, boy, you've got three service times to choose from now either at Harvest Riverside or Harvest Orange County. You can join Pastor Greg Laurie at either 8 a.m., 10 a.m., or 12 noon. For all the details, just go to harvest.org. You're listening to SoCal's Morning Rush. Elijah on Mount Carmel famously asked the people of Israel, how long will you waver between two opinions? When I preached on that message, I linked what James said in James 1.8, when he talked about a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. And we began to ask the question, what is the cure for being double-minded? How do we get out of that? How do we stop waffling, having a foot in the world and a foot in Christ, and being unstable? The answer is repentance and being single-minded, getting back to where God would have us to be. Check it out, 1 Kings 18.21 and James 1.8. It is Pastor Michael Lance. We have a program called Walk in Truth on KKLA. Hey, you can find out more about that program when you go to walkintruth.com. And you can also find out about the church that I pastor in the city of Corona called Living Truth. Check it out at walkintruth.com. God bless you. Car payments, credit card payments, home loans, student loans. That's a lot of debt to carry. Let us help you get caught up when you enter the $18,000 Get Caught Up sweepstakes. We have $18,000 in prize money to help pay down your debt. The grand prize winner gets up to $10,000 of debt relief. Three first prize winners get up to $1,000. And 10 second prize winners will get $500. It could be you. It's the $18,000 Get Caught Up sweepstakes. Enter today at kkla.com. kkla.com. The King James Bible mentions gold 417 times and silver 320 times as real wealth. I'm Mike Cordova, founder of the Gold Financial Group right here in Los Angeles. Back in 2008, when the stock market crashed, I personally witnessed family members and close friends lose a lot of the retirement funds. So I made it my mission to help others and provide options at the Gold Financial Group by sharing many different ways you can protect yourself, your family, and your retirement. That's why we offer a free Gold Investor's Guide. If you have money in the bank, CDs, bonds, IRAs, 401ks, we can show you ways to make that that money work harder and safer. Be good stewards of your investments. Please call us at the Gold Financial Group, 800-214-9023. Okay, Kelly family, join me and my bride, Claire, in protecting yourself and your family from inflation. The Gold Financial Group, call Mike and get the free Gold Investor's Guide at 800-214-9023. You're smart, you're busy, and don't have time to waste on the mainstream media cycle. Salem News Channel breaks that cycle. Topics that matter from hosts worth watching. Dinesh D'Souza, Andrew Wilkow, Brandon Tatum, and more. Open debate and free speech you won't find anywhere else. Salem News Channel, not like the other guys. Watch anytime on any screen and free 24-7. Find everything you need to know at snc.tv. That's snc.tv. Christians should be serious about our faith. But does that mean we need to be serious people all the time? Especially in a world of weird, absurd stuff? And even when Christian culture gets crazy? I'm Barnabas Piper of the Happy Rant Podcast, where we cheerfully rant about pop culture, church culture, work, creativity, life, and just about everything. But we take Jesus seriously. Listen and subscribe at lifeaudio.com. Daily Encouragement. It's encouraging. It makes me happy. 99.5 KKLA. Find hope here. Listen on Odyssey. KKLA FM Los Angeles. Find hope here. Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the noon time. Jesus when the sun goes down. 
KLAFM Los Angeles. Find hope here. Yes, Jesus, all day long. I'm Donna Rush with SoCal's Morning Rush. Let's check in now. Hop on that Bible bus with Dr. J. Vernon McGee. This pre-recorded program is sponsored by Through the Bible Radio Network. God who attaches real value to man. That's the lesson our teacher, Dr. J. Vernon McGee, says we're learning as we travel through the Old Testament book of Job. Welcome to Through the Bible. I'm Steve Schwetz, inviting you to hop aboard the Bible bus for another great adventure in God's Word. Now, today we're going to hear more about Job's losses, including his dignity and sense of worth. We'll begin in chapter 3, verse 13. So go ahead and turn there now. And as you do that, I want to share a few letters from our fellow Bible bus passengers. Today, we're going to focus on those who join us in the language of Brazilian Portuguese. First, we've got Lucas in Rio de Janeiro who writes, I've been listening to your studies, and they have widened my heart and at the same time anchored it. As I deepen in the word, I feel as if my roots have grown every day. I certainly love those images, don't you? Now, here's an email. This one's from Marcia. I never liked to read the Old Testament. I thought it was very difficult. However, through your explanations, I am interested and want to know more. I'm grateful to God for giving me this chance to understand his word through such a clear and good program. May God bless you richly. And then Sergio writes us, In prison I found God through your programs. I listen every day and learn something new. My spiritual growth has been significant and I found myself a new person. Over time, I won the right to my freedom through the judicial process and I do not want to turn away from the word of God. I know your program will help me with that. And then Eliana tells us, Thank you for helping us to interpret the Word of God correctly and convey it to those who are not yet sure of it. May God guide and empower you more and more so that others may be guided. Aldo emailed us to say, I'm very happy with the programming because these studies enrich our faith and improve our knowledge about the kingdom of God. I have been listening for four years now, and every night at bedtime, my seven-year-old daughter says, Dad, I want to hear the Word of God. She means she wants to listen to your program. God bless you for this and for all that you do. Our final email comes from Luciana. I really like your program. I was away from church, busy with day-to-day things, and my faith was getting cold. In December of last year, a sister in my church commented about your messages, and I began to listen. Since then, I have sought God more, studied His Word, and been in communion with family in the faith. I love to accompany your prayers before the program, and I ask the Lord to be fruitful in my life. May God keep blessing you as you share his word with others. Well, aren't those encouraging? Keep praying for our brothers and sisters around the world. And now let's pray for our own hearts as we begin our study. Heavenly Father, thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. Thank you for your spirit feeding our souls and guiding our paths. We ask that as we turn to your word, Lord, that you would fill us with wisdom, with knowledge, and with truth. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Here's our study of Job 3 on Through the Bible with Dr. J. Vernon McGee. Our friends, we have seen that this man, Job, is being made a test case. Shall we say it? He's a guinea pig. And Satan has challenged God. He says, this man, you put a hedge around him. He has everything. And you begin to take those things away from him, and he'll curse you to your face. He casts a slur upon mankind and upon God, a blasphemy. And the intelligences of heaven must have cringed and certainly blushed when they heard this highest creature that God had created, who's now fallen, cast this slur upon Almighty God. Now, God permitted Satan to get at this man, Job, and he began to move into this man's life, and we saw that he took one thing after another away from him to break him down. And I think that probably... I ought to pause right here before we come to this third chapter where we were listening last night to the complaint of Job and see here the background of all of this again. The very interesting thing is that you and I today belong to a 
lost race. It's difficult to think that you and I are living down here among a bunch of liars and cutthroats and thieves and murderers. And somebody says, but I'm not like that. I'm afraid that you are, and I'm afraid all of us are. We belong to that kind of race. And that's the reason God can't take us to heaven as we are. After all, if God took the world to heaven as it is today, you wouldn't have anything but just the world all over again. Now, I don't know about you, but I see no reason to duplicate it. And God apparently sees no reason, and therefore he's not taking us to heaven as we are. That's the reason the Lord Jesus had to say, to a refined, polished, religious Pharisee, you must be born again. Now, if it's any comfort to any of us, we're all in the same boat. And we talk about normal behavior today. The psychologist is great at that. And how in the world does he arrive at normal behavior? Well, what he does, he plots a chart. And where the majority of people are, that's normal. One end is abnormal, the other end is supernormal. And that's where the few are at either end. But who said the middle is normal? I don't think it is. We're all in sin today. Now, this creature called man is frail, he's feeble, and he's faulty. It's easy to upset the equilibrium of any man. It can happen to any of us. It's easy to depart from the pattern, to tip the scale. And someone has said that one out of 10 people spend time in a mental institution. It's hard for me to believe that's true, but that's the statistic given to me. Now, God has placed about man certain props to make man stand straight and upright. The book of Ecclesiastes puts it like this in Ecclesiastes 7.29. God has made man upright but they seek out many devices, many inventions. Now he's clothed man with an armor protection, a security, if you please. God has given to all men, godly and ungodly, certain aids. He makes it rain on the just and unjust. The wicked get just as much sunshine and air to breathe, and their health is just as good as those that are the godly, those that are Christ today. Now, the devil knows that if he can get to a man, remove the props, strip man of every vestige of aid, take away his soft garment of security, take away his blanket, he can upset man and turn him upside down, destroy his morale, rearrange his thinking, brainwash him. And therefore, God's placed about a man a hedge to keep the devil away. Now, sometimes the devil is permitted to crash the gate, and he'll strip a man down to his naked soul. And God permitted the devil to brainwash Job. The book of Job presents the problem, states the stripping of a man's soul. Not the solution. You must go to the New Testament for the real answer they are suggested in this book. It's sort of like the algebra book I had at school. The problems were in the front, the answers were in the back of the book. And the Bible is like that. You get the problem here, you turn over to the New Testament, you get the answer. Now, the Old Testament, in many respects, is a very unsatisfactory book, by the way. Nothing actually solved that. And as someone has put it, the Old Testament is expectation. The New Testament is realization. Now, just watch for a moment. As far as we've come now, the devil has been brainwashing Job. He strips Job of every vestige of covering. Let's look at that for a moment because it's going to help us now as we enter this dialogue that Job has with his friends. One of the basic needs of man is material substance. You see, an animal is already born with a coat on. You and I, when we're little, somebody, especially our parents, have to get us a coat. And later on, you and I have to buy a coat, food and clothing and shelter. Animal can stand out in the weather. Man can. And therefore, man needs to have barns and flocks and herds and lands. And he needs to have things about him. He needs to have a home. And we're told in Scripture, he's given us richly 
all things to enjoy. And God wants man to enjoy the things that he's put in this world. Although the curse of sin is on it, God has provided for man in a very wonderful way. Now, physical things actually can be spiritual blessings. Prosperity is God's gift. And there's nothing wrong in building bigger barns. The danger lies in depending upon these things, leaning upon them as if that's all there is to life. And actually, I think that today the prosperity and the affluence of the United States has been giving us a bad conscience for a long time. And we've spent billions of dollars out yonder passing out crumbs in order that we might enjoy what we've got. And it hasn't been to any avail because all we're doing is saving a bad conscience. Now, many articles today have been written comparing us to the rest of the world. Well, our gadgets and our conveniences and our comforts actually have been creating a prison for us. I'm amazed today during a holiday weekend how everybody tries to get away from their push buttons they try to get away from their electric blanket, their TV set, and from all of the nice gadgets they have in the kitchen and go way out in the desert out here in California. They beat it for the desert or down at the seashore. They want to rough it, they say. What do they mean? Why, well, they feel like they're in prison. And actually, the Christian needs to get alone to take an inventory. Am I trusting in the things or am I trusting in God? Now, Job lost all. He went from prosperity to poverty. And Job was moved, but he wasn't removed from the foundation. Then the second thing that happened to him that God permitted and the devil did, he took away his loved ones. And you and I need loved ones to prop us up. When we're a little child, a little baby, that's the reason that the Lord makes babies so attractive, so we cuddle them and hug them. How wonderful it is. My, the greatest thrill I ever had in my life was to hold in my arms my first child, and I lost that child. And the greatest thrill I have today is holding that little old grandson. God's made us that way. Now, when you begin to grow up, the child goes to the parents for love and sympathy. Hurts his little finger, and he runs in and has his mama kiss it. And now you know that doesn't do it a bit of good. Sure helps, so. Now, without these, the child develops conflicts and complexes. And the psychologist, I think, is right about that. And as a child grows to adulthood, into the teens, a dear lady called me the other day, and she's disturbed because her two teenage boys don't listen to her anymore. Well, she hasn't discovered that God made them that way because he's getting ready to push the little eaglets out of the nest, to be on their own. And then one day, love's transferred to somebody else and then transferred to one's own children. Now, Job lost his children, seven sons, three daughters. And then there's something else that is a great factor in the well-being of man, that's health. And today, I notice in the paper, so many suicides. And they say so-and-so was in ill health. But there's countless numbers, though, of saints today that are laid aside, bedridden. And those folk probably have learned to trust God in a way that you and I have not learned to trust God. And so the devil took away the health of Job. That was a great blow to him. And then he moved and took away the love and sympathy of a companion. Now, God gave Adam a help me. And a help me means the other half of him, the responder, the other part of him. And I think God has a rib for every man. That is, he has a wife. And God has instituted marriage for the welfare and happiness of man. And many a man who stands at the forge of life today, faithful and strong, and he faces the battle and the daily grind, and he's brave and true, but when he goes home, he pillows his head on the breast and the lap of a wife who understands him and maybe even sobs out his soul. No Samson was ever weaker in the lap of a Deliah than the man who has a good wife. 
and he's able to pull his head upon her. Oh, how wonderful that is. Now, Job's lost the sympathy of his wife. We've seen that. Now, his friends have come to mourn with him, and he's going to find out that they were just a mirage on the desert. When he saw them coming, he thought it was an oasis, but it was a mirage. And he finally calls them miserable comforters. We're going to see why. Now, what else can the devil do to Job? Well, he's destroyed the whole set of values. And now he moves in, and this is the thing we want to watch now. He loses his sense of the worth and dignity of his own personality. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? God pity young people today that throw away their life for a little pill or to please a group of evil-minded companions. It's only God today that really attaches a value to man. The Lord Jesus said, you are of more value than sparrows. You know why? Because he died for us. And that's how much we are worth, the blood of Christ. And it was during the dark ages that a very brilliant scholar fell sick and was picked up on the highway. And the doctors thought he was a bum. And they began to talk. They said, shall we operate on this worthless creature? And they were speaking in Latin, and Muritus was the scholar, and he understood them. He raised up and answered them in Latin, and he says, do not call a creature worthless for whom Christ died. And so the devil tries to cause us to lose the worth and dignity of our own personality. And then Job is going to lose his sense of the justice of God. And he'll become critical and cynical before it's over. And we need to recognize here that there's a great deal in the book of Job that is inspired. It's all inspired. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. This is what I mean. The devil was not inspired to tell a lie to Eve. But the record that tells us that he lied when he did it that record is what is inspired. And some people say just because it's in the Bible, that means that it's true. Let's find out who says it. And in the book of Job, we need to be very careful about that. Now he lost also his sense of the love of God. And finally, he could cry out, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Well, we'll have to go to the New Testament and we'll look there before we finish the book of Job in order to get the answer, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And that's the answer to Job's cry. Oh, that there were a daysman to stand between us. Job said if there was only someone that could take hold of the hand of God and take hold of my hand and bring us together. And there is someone today. Now, I've spent time on this because it's very, very important, friends to get this background, to understand the dialogue that's going on. Now, we got down last time to Job 3, verse 14. Now, he has pictured death here as annihilation. All sleep equally, kings and counselors of the earth, which build desolate places for themselves, great pyramids, great monuments, but they're on the same par. And he complains that this oblivion is denied him. Actually, there are two things that Job is saying in this third chapter. He wishes he'd never been born. And having been born, he wished he'd died at birth. Those are the two things, and he finds no relief, therefore. And it's quite dramatic, and this is wonderful language that you read through here. And I begin reading at verse 14. With kings and counselors of the earth which built desolate places for themselves, or with princes that had gold, who fill their houses with silver, or as a hidden untimely birth, I had not been as infants which never saw light. He says, I wish I'd been stillborn, that I hadn't come into this world. He says, there the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary be at rest. There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. In other words, he pictures death as being preferred to life. 
Now, he's come pretty far down, as you can see. He says, the small and great are there, and the servant is free from his master. Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery, and life unto the bitter in soul. He said, life is such a burden. I don't want to live it. I want to die. And he goes on, verse 21, which long for death, but it cometh not, and dig for it more than for hid treasures. Why, this man Job says, I would welcome death more than a miner digging for gold. And when the miner finds the gold, it's a shout, you know. And Job says, well, if I could just die, I'd want to shout about that. And listen to him, verse 23, why is light given to a man whose way is hidden and whom God hath hedged in? For my sighing cometh before I eat, my roarings are poured out like the waters. This poor man is in a desperate, desolate condition. Now he says, for the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Now when Job was dwelling in peace and prosperity, yonder in the land of us, and things were going so well with him, and he was living in the lap of luxury, and everyone was saying, my, I tell you, he's certainly having it wonderful. Job says at that very moment that I was sitting in the lab of luxury. I dreaded, I was afraid that this thing that's happened to me might come to me. And I think that's the fear today of a great many people. Fear that something terrible is going to happen to them. And therefore we grab for the blanket instead of grabbing for the Savior. Most of us ought to be using a Bible for our blanket and not be turning today to other things. Need to rest upon the word of God. And this man Job says, finally, I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Trouble's come to him now. And this man, you almost get the impression here that at the very beginning, he's lost his faith, but he actually hasn't. This is a complaint. This is the bitter complaint of a man that's now tasting the dregs that are in the bottom of the cup of life, of trouble that has come upon him, and he doesn't understand at all why it should come. Now there are his three friends. They're sitting there. They've been sitting for seven days, and they've been wagging their head. They've been, you know, mm-hmm, you finally got caught up with. Well, 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 it finally came to you. And so Job could take everything else, but he can't take this from his friends. And so he broke out in this monologue of complaint, of whining. And it's tremendous, but it does not have the answer at all. It is black pessimism. Now his three friends are going to begin to talk to him. And the first one will be Eliphaz. And he will speak to Job, and then Job will answer him. And then Bildad, the second one, and Job will answer him. And then Zophar will speak, and Job will answer him. Now, I'm going to give just a pen picture of these men next time as we look at the discourse of Eliphaz. But to me, it's quite interesting, the meaning of these men's name. Eliphaz means God is strength, or God is fine gold. And he gives three speeches here. And we'll see the background of this man and what he has in mind. Then Bildad, and his name means he's a son of contention. He's a mean one, by the way. Actually, he's brutal and blunt and crude in his method. His name means son of contention. And then Zophar means a sparrow. That means he twitters. And he's got a mean tongue also. And he makes terrible insinuations to Job. We'll pick up there next time as we take up the discourse of Eliphaz in chapter 4. May the Lord richly bless you, my beloved. Five, four, three, two, one. Ah! 
very difficult very, very time with his three friends. I hope that you'll join us next time for another exciting journey on the Bible bus. If you'd like to invite someone to hop on board with you, or if you'd like to listen to any of these messages again, visit us at ttb.org forward slash Job or download our app for both iPhone and Android. Well, that's also the place where you can download Dr. McGee's notes and outlines for our study in Job. It's over at ttb.org, or you can get them straight from the app itself. If you prefer to get a free copy of Briefing the Bible that contains all of Dr. McGee's notes and outlines in a single resource, you can request yours by calling one 800 60 Bible, or you can download a PDF version by going to ttb.org forward slash briefing the Bible, all one word. Or again, call us at 1 800 65 Bible. Well, that's all for now. I'm Steve Schwetz, and I'll see you next time when the Bible bus comes back by your way. Or hop aboard anytime, any day through any of our digital resources. We live in a great day to study God's Word together. Jesus came in Bible exists to take God's whole word to the whole world. And we invite you to stand with us with your faithful prayer and financial support. Where will God's word go today? Through the Bible was sponsored by Through the Bible Radio Network and was pre-recorded. You can hear Dr. McGee again tonight at 8 o'clock right here on KKLA. I'm Donna Rush with SoCal's Morning Rush. You know, to have that boldness for Christ, it's important for us to remind ourselves, remind yourself, remind myself truths about our identity in Christ. So here's a few things I want to share with you as a believer in Christ Jesus, as your Savior and as your Lord. You are accepted in the beloved. That comes from Ephesians 1. You are filled with the Holy Spirit of promise. Yes, we are. Ephesians 1.13. You are strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. That's Ephesians 6. So no matter what is going on in our life, right? May we remember who we are in Christ Jesus. Finally, Ephesians 2 tells us we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Amen. SoCal's Morning Rush. I listen every morning on 99.5 KKLA. Find hope here. Cal Hope can help. Access free and secure mental health resources today. Learn more or live chat at calhope.org. Wondering how to manage your investments for retirement? Here's chartered financial consultant Tom Meglia with a true story. I had a lady come to me after she went through a very contentious divorce and she's now in her 60s and we helped square away the different assets that belong to her and put together a brand new financial and estate plan and she feels so much better about moving forward. So what's your situation? Log on to theeconomyofgod.com and then call Tom Meglia at 800-386-3700 for a complimentary, no-obligation retirement strategy meeting. 800-386-3700. Investment advisory services offered through Fusion Capital Management, an SEC-registered investment advisor. The firm only transacts business in states where it's properly registered or is excluded or exempted from registration requirements. SEC registration is not an endorsement of the firm by the commission and doesn't mean advisor has attained a specific level of skill or ability. All investment strategies have potential for profit or loss. California Insurance License 0567507. It's time to plan for the new school year. Heritage Christian School offers preschool through high school across three campuses in Granada Hills and Northridge, where students learn to impact the world for Christ. Heritage is ACSI and WASC accredited with amazing teachers and staff, high school academic standards, performing arts, competitive sports, enrichment opportunities, programs for students with learning differences, and more. Following all safety protocols, preschool through 12th grade are on campus learning. Applications are being accepted for fall 2023 and space is limited. Tuition is very affordable and financial assistance is available. Join the HCS community today where warriors are stronger together. Call Heritage Christian School in Granada Hills and Northridge at 818-894-5742. 818-894-5742. Online at heritage-schools.org. That's heritage-schools.org. Parents, Pastor Scott here. Have you ever considered enrolling your child in a private Christian school? You like the religious emphasis, small class sizes, and the solid Christian curriculum. So what's stopping you? 
What if you could give your child all of that for half price? The KKLA Half Price Tuition Program is back beginning Tuesday, June 20th at 3 p.m. With our Half Price Tuition Program, you pay just half the tuition. KKLA pays the rest. We have a large list of outstanding schools right in your area with active in-class learning, strong academics, technology, the arts, sports, and character development all rooted in God's Word. With only two tuitions available per school, they'll go fast, so don't miss out. Go to KKLA.com, click the Half Price Tuition banner, do your research now so that you're ready for the on-sale date, Tuesday, June 20th at 3 p.m. It's the KKLA Half Price Tuition Program. Don't wait. Go to KKLA.com. That's KKLA.com. It's back! Fish Fest 2023, Saturday, June 10th, Five Point Amphitheater in Irvine. Presented by Absolute Airflow. It's a day and night of worship featuring fan favorite for King and Country. We both know what it's like to be here. For King and Country. Fix my eyes. Joined by C.C. Wyatt. Jonathan Trailer at this year at Fish Fest. What are you waiting for? Log on to thefishoc.com and get your tickets to Fish Fest 2023. Bring everyone in the family. Family fun zones, food trucks, games, best of all, music. Get your tickets to Fish Fest. Thefishoc.com. Sponsored by Absolute Airflow, Purpose Funding, Power Pro, and Hope International University. God is with us. Listen on Odyssey. En este instante. No hace cinco años, no hace diez. Tengo mucha experiencia. Venmo was not on the list. Ooh, uh, we said Instagram. Um, uh. <laughs> Pepto Bismol. Use as directed to keep out of reach of children. Hi, I'm a helpful Southern California Honey Person. And it's proud to partner with iHeartRadio for Can Cancel Pride for the fourth quarter. Please, 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 please. The mind blowing contest. Taylor Swift tickets. Thank you so much. I'm taking all your favorite superstars. This is Selena Gomez. Best of all, it doesn't cost a thing. Download the absolutely free iHeartRadio app now. In this week's marketers report, Raja Raja Manar, Chief Marketing and Communications Officer of MasterCard, talks about measurement. Measuring Sonic and Sonic Brand. Luis R. Conríquez, va a ser Pancho Barraza, va a estar La Josa también ahí. Yeah. We, it was a good game. It was 4 to 1. We lost 4 to 1. So you. Un raro poder. And Jeremy Camp next summer in Israel. Ay, 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 ay. Yo soy Luis Andoval. Y yo, Gayasí. En Buena Vibra te ayudamos a tener una mejor relación de pareja. Mario y Sonia ya tienen yeah. un par de boletos yeah. para este concierto. Hoy, mi Mario, vas a llegar con la sorpresa de que se van a Maluma gratis. Lo bueno, que voy a tener lunch toda la otra semana. ¡Ándale! <risa> Acompaña a Luis Sandoval y Gayasí de lunes a viernes de 3 a 7 de la tarde. Buena Vibra en Caleb 107.5. En junio, VIX nos trae los estrenos del momento. Pocos casos han sido tan impactantes y controvertidos como el asesinato del comediante y presentador mexicano Paco Stanley. El show Crónica de un Asesinato investiga todas las versiones de este caso del que se habló durante años. Además, los mejores comediantes del stand-up mexicano se reúnen en VIX. No te pierdas, Inmaduros, un especial de comedia con Adrián Uribe y Adal Ramones exclusivo en VIX. VIX te ofrece los mejores contenidos en español en un solo lugar y totalmente gratis. La cabina de tráfico está patrocinada por los defensores. Te lastimas en un accidente, llama al 1-800-636-3636 y problema resuelto. 
Continuamos por Boyle Heights, donde hay tráfico lento y por el 10 pues, entre el 101 y la calle Fairfax. Si vas conduciendo por Garden Grove, continúa el accidente por la carretera 22, dirección a la altura de la calle Brookhurst. Y Mission Hill también reporta lentitud y por 405 Sur entre Devonshire y Moraga Drive. Te informo, Liz Alvarado. Buenos días. Este reporte es patrocinado por The City of Los Angeles. El primero de julio, el salario mínimo aumentará a 16.78 la hora para empleados. De I'm just like, you know what? Good job, boys. Yeah. Do what you could. Good job, team. Go, team. Yeah. I, the, no, giving, like, yeah. no I feel like on, a robot, robot could. Come off. They could. No, yeah. and trim your nails. Yeah. I'll save this on. Aboard Queen Elizabeth, the magic of Alaska comes alive. Hi, it's Ellen Kay, and Cunard has invited us aboard this summer. Follow me as we embark from Vancouver to experience one of the most unique Alaska voyages in the world. Every, Every guest is with white star service. 